Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss grain processing capabilities. Let's look at different research results looking at the effects of grain particle size. This data from Farm Farmland Industries looks at three types of corn. Crack corn, 2200 microns, ground corn, approximately 1100 microns, and a combination blend of 50-50. You can look at the research and it's very eye-opening. The only difference here is grain particle size. We can see the finely ground corn produces about six pounds more milk, statistically significant, a trend for higher butterfat test, higher milk protein, which means the rumen microbes are really working harder on that corn, at the same dry matter intake, and the cows actually gained more weight on the finer corn, which means we didn't borrow it from the cows back. Bottom line is that this corn produced more milk or there was less starch in the fecal material. We then go to another data set from Land Lakes and the answer farm. Here we can see looking at five different processes of corn. Pelleted corn, ground corn, cracked corn, steam flake, and a blend of steam flaked and ground corn. And again we see that same guideline. No difference in dry matter intakes, although there are some variations up there. But the big number circled is milk yield. And again the cracked corn comes in a very distant fifth at 90 and a half pounds of milk. We can see the other corns are averaging around 95 or 96 pounds of milk. Again, that six pound difference due to particle size or processing of the corn grain. Butter fat test, no significant difference, but a trend that our steam flake corn is lower. Milk proteins, no significant difference, but again, we can see the cracked corn is lower than the rest, maybe indicating availability of amino acids. And finally, we look at milk urea nitrogen or MUNs. And again, we can see significant impact here is that the cracked corn is much, much higher. And that is probably related to less availability of the starch to capture the ammonia in the rumen, resulting in more nitrogen spilling into the blood and into the milk. Bottom line, again, about a six pound milk response when we have corn optimally processed. Next, load of Penn State. Powerful data set. Here we can look at three different levels of rates of degradation. And they'll be defined on the next slide. Slow, moderate, and fast. And again, isn't it interesting? Six pound difference between the slow versus the fast total non-structural carbohydrate, which is similar to basically starch in the feeding program. Again, a slight trend decrease in butter fat test. 4% fat corrected milk, about a four pound difference here. Milk protein, again, a trend up higher here. The milk rea nitrogens go down, just like in the previous study, and very similar dry matter intakes. Now, this slide has some answers for you and I. First of all, it determines the rate of passage, 6% per hour on the slow versus nearly 8% per hour on the fast. That is a big difference when you look at feeding dairy cows. Rumen pH, yes, as you would anticipate, slightly lower on the fast-fed cows, but very safe at 6.2. The acetate to propionate, exactly what we'd expect to see, and that is that we see a little bit of a shift going on here with a little higher proportion of propionate versus acetate. But look at the next line, total VFA. That's the energy yield that's coming off here, and you can see a trend certainly of higher total VFA. So the fast fermented corn, not only does it have a slightly different VFA profile, which reflects a little bit in the components, but there is just more VFA being produced. Again, the blood urea nitrogens reflect the MUN value, and of course the NEFAs, which means are these cows in negative energy balance? The good news, no. Lower NEFA values, which means these cows are mobilizing less body fat. This data set very clearly tells us biologically what is going on in these cows if and we get grain processed correctly. Powerful, powerful research. Well, let's now apply it on your farm. Hopefully we have convinced you that we need to look at this as an important management consideration. We use the screen systems here at the University of Illinois. And you can see several of these screens here with different corn particle sizes and a view of what comes out in the manure. We are using a five screen system. They are pictured at the top. Basically, screens are identified when you purchase them by the number of squares to the inch. So a number four has four squares to an inch or quarter inch openings. A number 16, which would be very similar to your flower sifter or your window screen, 16 squares to the inch. The next column indicates micron size. Every farmer should know what their micron size of their ground grain would be because as we saw earlier, it impacts performance and utilization of the feed. Over 4,500 micron is whole or coarse particle size. We call that pheasant feed in Wisconsin because the birds will come out and actually peck through the manure to eat the corn because it's passing through. 
2200 micron is pretty much the cracked corn particle size we saw in the uh, agway and the farmland industries. And again, this is fairly high uh, rate of passage and starch loss in the cow. We estimate probably between 15 to 25 percent. Number 16 is what you and I would call ground dairy feed. Most dairymen would never go finer than that because of the concern of palatability. However, our TMRs really hide this powdery feed. Now we get down to the real action. Here comes pig feed. Pig feed normally is 7 to 800 microns, so we can see that this is a very fine particle size, and then something we call powder. This is talcum powder, less than 500 microns using our number 30 screen. We call that poor man's sugar because it ferments extremely fast in the rumen because of its solubility and fine particle size with excellent surface area. Now here's an example ration, grain mix. How would you judge this? Here is our breakdowns in terms of percent on the top screens, middle and bottom screens. Now if you understand how our screens work, then you can interpret this sample. Most of us would say, wow, there are surely some differences, but is this an A plus or is it a C minus? Let's go to our next slide and grade it out. This table is a bit busy. You may want to stop, study this a bit later, or print it out. On the bottom is our sample feed, the numbers we had in the previous slide. Now, that was a dry corn sample, so we'll go to the bottom line. Ideally, we want no corn on the number four screen, i.e. pheasant feed. And the good news, there's very little here. However, we had 20% on our coarse or crack grain screen. That's a little bit coarse. The number 16 screen, right on the money. But of course, we can see as we get to the finer particle sizes, we're just a little bit short. So we would probably give that last grain mix a B or B plus. It's fairly good. We'd like to see it slightly ground finer than we have here today. Now, if you look at this screen, you can see high moisture corn. Now, the question you have to decide is when does high moisture corn behave like a fermented feed? In this slide, you can see anything less than 25%, we would process it just like dry corn. Some of you may want to use 22%, 23%, but pick a number when you're saying, I need to grind it like dry corn. Then we go up the screen, we can see wetter corn, 25 to 30%, and over 30% moisture. And the key there is that this corn now has to be processed coarser because it is now fermented, the starch is more available, it is exposed, and we can have rumen acidosis if we get a too fine a corn with the really wet products here. Very powerful slide that you have to use as a nutritionist to interpret grain particle size. Now, you can purchase these screens or you can build these screens. Uh, there's two sources, Seed Burrow Company, addresses and costs are listed, and these costs are as of 2001. So the price may go up or down depending on where you're buying it and the time that you're buying it. So if you're interested, you can also build these screens. Again, if you go to a hardware store, you can almost undoubtedly get the number four, number eight, and number 16. And a square yard of that screen will probably cost you 2 to 4 to $5. If you build a frame around it, you can very quickly sift corn uh, very, very quickly and much less expensive compared to buying these very nice brass screens that lock in. But these are USDA government-approved screens, and they're used to, particle, to evaluate particle size of any type of product on the marketplace. Let's now use another idea that we've came up with here at Illinois. It's called a relative corn index, or RCI. Relative corn index says, besides all these percentages, let's try to determine a value, much like relative feed value, that a farmer or a nutritionist could calculate to try to bring all these numbers together. And all we did simply is to take factors and multiply the percent of the feed by the factor. And of course, the smaller the feed, the higher the factor. And this is a little bit like playing golf. You probably want a low score if you're on acidosis. If you really want to make that rumen lug, you want a higher score. And at some point, we may have too high a score that may cause metabolic disorders. So here you can see two different corn samples, one we will call coarse. 10% on the top screen, 30, 45, 10, and 5. Multiply by 1 or 2 or 4 or 5. And you can see this one has a value of 270. So that's a fairly low value. In fact, I like to see values over 300 in most of my rations. Then I go to a fairly fine screen, very much to our guidelines, but maybe actually could be a little bit lower than the number 16 screen, but this would probably get you an A on your corn. And you can see this has a value of 350. So we're saying you should be over 300. Once you get close to 350, you really got this corn cooking. And you have to be sure everything else in the diet and the management program is correct. So if I had a value under 300, 
under 300, I would expect to see these characteristics. Probably feeding high moisture corn. In fact, if it's really wet corn, I may want that number below 250. I may have a very high starch corn silage. Remember, corn can contain as much as 40 to 45% starch. Therefore, I don't want this grain to be too hot. It may have a high starch diet, 28-29%. I may have chopped my haylage too short. Or I may be component feeding and I'm slugging parts to the cow. See how I can use that value to say I want to be on the low end if some of these things are popping up in my ration. Conversely, I'd like to have a very high score if I had, for example, modest levels of starch in the diet. This would be true, for example, in Florida where they feed lots of hominy and byproduct feeds. Or if I have a corn silage that doesn't have a lot of corn in it. If I got a long particle size, it means my ration is fairly well protected. If I got a haylage-based diet that has lots of soluble nitrogen that I really want to soak up to cut down my buns and mun numbers. If I had dry corn in the diet, we know we want a higher starch value. And, of course, we're feeding total mixed rations. So in the field, how can I evaluate, is my grain particle size right or wrong? Well, certainly all we can manure score. If the score gets extremely low, we think the corn might be too finely processed too much starch. We can look at the grain in the manure. As you can see on the right side here, that piece of corn has all the feed value in it. And we can determine that perhaps it's too coarse. In this situation, this piece of corn came from the corn side. Look for signs of acidosis. The grain is too fine or too much starch. Milk yield changes. If I grind finer, do my cows go up or down two or three pounds of milk? Will my cows eat more free choice buffer if I change particle size in my feeding program? What am to my mun values? Example in Illinois, farmer grinds the feed finer, muns go down four points, milk goes up two, point, two pounds. Excellent example. And maybe we can also monitor, monitor, monitor component changes. If I process my corn finer and the cows are healthier, I get more microbial protein and my milk protein test should go up. So in summary, be careful. Remember, if I go too fine or if I eat too much fermentable starch, I can cause acidosis. So look at forage and total ration particle size, evaluate the total starch levels in the diet, determine the role or ratios of forage and byproducts in the feeding program, and look at cow behavior. We may have a per perfect ration, but if that cow goes out and sorts all that fine grain and eats it, she is going to have a problem. Number two, measure your grain particle size. Are you 1,000? Are you 1,400? Are you 1,800? And is that size right for your herd and your feeding program? And finally, plan your strategies. If I have a cracked corn and I grind it finer and I get 20% more starch available in the rumen, you have to back off on the starch. Otherwise, you're going to have rumen acidosis. And certainly be aware that as the grain forage sources change, we also got to change the grain particle size. Challenging opportunity with six pounds laying on the table in terms of milk production. That concludes our module on grain processing. Thanks and have a good day.